break. After a lightning invasion today, Iraqi troops have seized control. I took this action to assist the Saudi Arabian government in the defense of its homeland. The ultimatum of January the 15th for Iraq to leave Kuwait passed easily. Good evening. The deadline has come and gone. The Iraqis are living on what President Bush calls borrowed time. It is no longer whether the war will start, but when. On the 17th of January, 1991, President Bush ordered Operation Desert Storm, the air campaign, to begin. Hit enemy leadership and infrastructure, and simultaneously deal with all facets of the enemy's armed forces, all from the air. The coalition concentrated on the strategic mission of gaining aerial superiority over the Kuwaiti theater. The coalition achieved this by striking Saddam's strategic infrastructure for controlling the Iraqi war machine. The first few hours of coalition airstrikes left the Iraqi Air Force bereft of battle management data. Consequently, an already beleaguered Iraqi Air Force found itself woefully outclassed, both technologically and in terms of the professional skills its pilots possessed. Very quickly, the Iraqi Air Force surrendered the skies to the coalition. Three specific elements made this air attack different from those that had gone before in prior applications of air power. First, the reliance on and capability for pinpoint nighttime attack. Second, the extensive reliance on electronic warfare to mask attacks and confuse Iraq's defenders. And third, the huge volume of aerial refueling that went on continuously during the war. At 4 a.m. on the 24th of February, 1991, the ground war commenced. Schwarzkopf's ground war supposedly implemented the new American maneuverist doctrine of air-land battle. Introduced in the early 1980s, this doctrine sought to restore decisiveness to warfare by using maneuver rather than traditional American attritional approaches. To do this, air-land battle targeted enemy centers of gravity, such as command and control. The doctrine also envisaged a joint campaign effort by air, naval, marine and army forces that employed cutting-edge technology to strike deep using aircraft, artillery and missiles. At 8 a.m. on the 28th of February, coalition announced a ceasefire exactly 100 hours after the ground campaign had begun. On the day following the ceasefire, Iraq announced its compliance with all the UN resolutions concerning the invasion of Kuwait. 